My friend had set me up with one of her work friends as I was single, and really had nothing to do for Valentine's Day. She confirmed everything beforehand with the both of us and arranged us a full-on date. She booked a restaurant reservation for us and everything, and I was quite thankful to her for thinking about me that much. Anyways, fast forward to Valentine's Day. Me and my date were going to meet up at the restaurant for the first time. I had seen pictures of my date, so I knew what they looked like. We hadn't directly contacted or talked to each other before that, because my friend wanted it to be a very blind date type experience. That is why she did all the arrangements for us. It was around 8 p.m. on Valentine's Day that we met up at the restaurant. My friend had actually driven me to the restaurant. I had a great time and by the end, my date decided to drop me off at my place as I didn't come in my own car. I agreed and off we went. My place at that time was a rental where I was sharing a house with four other housemates. It was a relatively big house, so four people living there didn't feel crowded at all. The house was down this dark road, the ones you see in horror movies that are surrounded by nothing but deep, dark forest. Yeah, that was my way to my place. So, at night, the road used to get quite scary, even for me. Anyways, as my date was driving, we talked about how nice the night went and we should meet up again for another date. I was excited to hear that and agreed. As we were just chit-chatting while on this scary road, we saw this woman standing at the left side by the forest just waving her hands erratically at us as there were no other cars on that road. I don't know how to explain it, but the way she was waving her hand was really erratic, as if she was in direct need of help. I told him to not stop the car as I was kind of creeped out, especially at such a scary, dark road. It could have been a trap for all I know. My date at that point had slowed the car down a little bit as he thought that woman was genuinely in need of help. But my intuition just didn't budge and I told him to not slow down and keep going. All of this happened in mere seconds of her coming into our vision and me having a bad feeling. My date wanted to help her, but at that point I was getting really scared. So I told him a bit more loudly to not stop and keep going. As our car was side by side with this woman, I noticed her face even more closely now, and it is something I will never forget. Her face was half burned, but not recently burned. You know how burned skin looks after some time as it starts peeling off? I don't know how else to explain it, but she didn't look human. Her waving looked very human, but her face didn't. And as we were almost side by side with this woman who, mind you, was still waving erratically, my date also noticed her face, and that is when he stepped on the gas and zoomed from there. The scariest thing was how her face just didn't match her body's movement. From afar, she looked like someone waving the car very panickingly. But when we noticed her face, even when we were right next to her, her face looked expressionless and not panicky. But she still didn't stop her waving, even when we sped up. I still remember looking back through the mirror, and she was still waving to us until she vanished from our sight. You know when you have feelings about something in your gut, you should listen to it. That night, my date dropped me off and, very rightfully so, was creeped out. I asked him to stay at my place if he wanted to, but he insisted that he would take a different route. We did end up going on other dates, but unfortunately it didn't work out. But the night is still ingrained in my memory. How she looked so expressionless and half of her face burned. I think it was something inhumane, and if we stopped to help her, who knows what would have happened. A man I spent some time chatting with during the pandemic actually seemed like a very nice fellow and we would call for hours for a few days. Then one day I was on the phone with a friend and when I hung up I noticed he called me ten times and left me very violent messages. He called me a tramp saying he knew I was a bad person but he had fallen in love with me even though we only talked for a few days and kinda apologized but I said this behavior was unacceptable and I was done with him. I couldn't deal with that and wouldn't answer anymore and blocked him. He then used different prepaid phones that I'd block each time. He texted me either threats or loving messages, putting all the blame on me, of course. Then when I wouldn't respond, he'd freak out and go back and forth between saying he'll assault and murder me or beat me until no one would recognize me and that I was the love of his life. I had to keep the vocal messages and texts for the police. It was torture. I couldn't change my phone number right away because I used it for work all the time and needed evidence. He lied saying he knew where I lived. He was very graphic with his threats and I didn't stay at my place for a while. I had to quit my job because it was basically in my building. I was so damn tired and frightened and helpless to have to listen to these awful things and thinking of what he might be doing to others. 
My friends had to stop me at some point during the procedure from answering, Come and get me. I'll give you the address. I'll take you down with me, and I will be the last one you hurt. They traced the first phone number, the only non-prepaid one, and he was about an hour drive away. I only feel safe because I have such amazing friends. I was lucky he was sick and showed his true colors very early on. Even luckier we couldn't meet. I would have been fooled otherwise. He was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I must have awoken between 12 and 3 a.m., and I was lying on my side, facing the wall my bed was pressed up against. I awoke with a pressing feeling of a presence in my room. I assumed it was my mother checking in on me, as my fever was pretty bad. I called out to her and was met with silence. At this point, I knew who or whatever was in my room was not my mother. Fear took over my rationality. It wasn't that I couldn't move, I was too scared to. I did manage to roll onto my back and kept my eyes locked on my ceiling. I did not want to look at it. It was at this time I began to feel a sense of peace and my dread dissipated. I began to feel comfort from the presence. As soon as my senses calmed, I would never forget what I saw next. A hand came into view, slowly cupping over my brow. It was not human. It was long and the digits on the hand were unusually long as well. The hand was slender, graceful, and downright creepy. It had a luminescence to it like I have never seen. As soon as it made contact with my forehead, I was out cold. The next morning I awoke in my bed. I shit you not, I was completely healthy. No fever, no trace of my previously drippy nose and nasty cough. I felt a strange sensation of well-being. I went immediately to my mother's room and asked her if she had been in my room. Confused, she informed me she had not and commented on my strange behavior. I told her what I could recount from the previous night's experience, and it was brought up from time to time, years and years later, as a very strange occurrence. My mother even went as far as to call it an angel, now on to the present. I feel it is relevant to mention that I have seen multiple UFOs throughout my life. It may also be worth it to say that I live in a very rural state. I have seen UFOs alone, in groups and with people who can verify their trajectory, so I know I am not insane. Day and nighttime sightings, aliens and UFOs do not cross my mind often, as my life now is busy. About one month ago, I had another experience that shook me up badly and made me recall the encounter I had as a child. I awoke around 12 or 3 a.m. to a distinct feeling of a presence in the room. I thought immediately we had a break-in and the intruder was in the room. I was on my back and filled with so much terror that I could not move. I have a nightlight adjacent to my bed that I share with my fiancé. He was sleeping on the side closest to where I assumed this thing was. I was petrified and too scared to look at his side of the bed. I instead saw the shadow of this thing cast on the wall right beside me. It had to have been no taller than four feet. From what I could tell from this shadow, it was slender with a large oval-shaped head. Again, I could not bring myself to look at it. It has bothered me that in these two experiences I could not bring myself to look. Something inside of me said, it's all over if you see it. Instead of feeling calm, this time I felt like my life was in danger. I did not get the good feelings I had from my previous encounter. I was out of my mind with fear and found I was unable to scream or move anything except my fingers. It raised its hand up and I instantly recognized it, even by the shadow. It was the same sort of hand I saw in my room over 10 years ago. At this point, I could feel my fingers pinching my fiance's thigh, but he was not waking up. This fueled my panic. I was so scared I actually fainted. I can't recall any dreams or details from there. The next night, I lay in bed with the night light on, lights off, and asked my fiancé to stand on his knees by the bed. His shadow mimicked an accurate projection placement of whatever was blocking the light the night previously. I have been deeply troubled by this since, and I have had no other instances of sleep paralysis in my entire life. So was this just some freak brain chemistry hiccup, a lucid nightmare, or actually an encounter with an interdimensional extraterrestrial being?